Thank you for joining our webinar today. We've got an information packed session introducing you to how Microsoft Technologies, Power Platform, Project Planner, and Copilot can work together. Let's get started. My name is Annie Levant, and I'm with a Microsoft Gold partner called Fragility. We've been implementing Microsoft Project and Portfolio Management Solutions and developing enterprise level applications for over 19 years for large enterprises including everything from engineering, construction, IT, and new product development. PMOs and CIOs typically come to us when they can't easily explain what's going on across all their projects. They don't know what resources are working on what work, and they have a hard time getting consistent reports and metrics to make project decisions. We're known for having a 90% on time, on budget track record for successfully implementing these solutions for clients. We offer services and solutions in three core areas. Deployment and Consulting Services, Fragility's core business. We provide professional services for successfully planning and implementing Microsoft Project Portfolio Management, including Microsoft Projects Online, Project for the Web Soon to be Planner, integrating PPM with line of business applications, and delivering strategic portfolio management solutions to support top-level management planning. Fragility also offers a set of Hammerhead pre-built software solutions and accelerators based upon 19 years of experience, including a set of Hammerhead products that provide improved access to your cloud PPM data, accelerate access to visual reports and dashboards using Power BI, connect data between your PPM system with Microsoft Teams, and extend connectivity into Active Directory to improve visibility, insight, and control over your work people and projects. New to our offerings is Hammerhead Power Pro, which is a pre-built solution crafted on the foundation of the Microsoft Power Platform and Project for the Web, along with the new planner. This offering is designed to help bring some of our lessons learned on this platform to your organization. Finally, Fragility provides post-implementation support services, including expert care, designed to assist your PMO with gaining on-demand expertise on the solutions supported. We have a full online automated e-learning offering that can improve consistency and adoption for your users of your project management tools. You can learn more about all of our services and solutions on our recently updated website, fragility.com. We have upcoming webinars covering sessions on best practices for Project the New Planner, Microsoft's AI Engine Copilot and PPM Processor Tools. Also, we're hosting our sixth virtual project conference in October, where we'll have a set of speakers sharing good practices and lessons learned around these solutions. You won't want to miss it. Sign up for this and all of our events at our Eventbrite page, following the link here. All videos from this and previous series are available on our best practice playlist on YouTube listed on this page. Topics range from managing your digital transformation program using PPM technologies to integrating PPM with agile line of business applications. Feel free to subscribe and access the library at any time and share with your colleagues. If you have any questions as you watch the presentation, please log them into the questions and answer manager at the top of your team screen and we'll review those towards the end of our session. With that, I'll hand the presentation off to Rob Hirschman, partner here at Fragility. Rob, you're up. Thanks a lot, and good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're going to go to today is some of the different components that are a part of the solution. We talk about Power Platform and Planner and Project, uh, all the different things that are a part of this. We're going to explain what those are and their different roles. Then we're going to talk about different solution approach and, uh, approaches and options as it relates to different levels of project management and maturity you might have. We'll spend some time actually demonstrating these solutions to you. And finally, we're going to talk about from an organizational perspective, how do you go about deploying these, planning for adoption, planning for good use and support for them, answer any questions. Let's talk about the different solution components we're talking about, because there are different Microsoft technologies at play here. First one is Microsoft Planner. This is the traditional planner or the green planner. And this is a visual task management engine that's available in Office 365. It comes free with your Office M365 subscription. It's a tool a lot of people use every day to just track different visual tasks and activities and share them with team members. Now, some of the changes that have happened really over the last six months with these products, one of the big ones is we have a new flavor of Planner, a new version of Planner that actually has two different flavors. So when we say Planner now, there are two flavors of this. The first one is a traditional Planner, like you would see on the top, which is your visual task management engine. And again, it comes free with M365. The second one is a version of Planner with quote unquote premium functionality. So what Microsoft has done is they've taken functionality that was available in a web-based tool called Project for the Web, which is really designed for business or casual or citizen project managers in the business, and they've applied it into the Planner platform as a step up, a premium set of functionality. 
So you can start with traditional planner and bump it up into a premium plan. And you take on some of these new functionality points that that would have. And that leverages what's called a project planner, a planner plan one license. This is available now in your commercial tenants. If you're with an organization that's in a commercial tenant, it was live in April and we're looking for GCC release dates in the next couple of months. So we're actually getting closer to this being released in government cloud. It is also available solely right now through Microsoft Teams and its user interface. Updates are gonna come through Teams first and then through the web user interface later. And this is how Microsoft's approach is really being driven by the use of Microsoft Teams. They're really looking to enable more access to the functionality in Teams because they find people spend 70 or 80% of their day in Teams. They'll roll the functionality out there, then they'll roll it out in the back end user interface in the web in uh, Office 365. So that's the new planner that we're talking about that's replacing traditional planner in most tenants today. The third component we're talking about here is the Microsoft Power Platform. And we're gonna get a little deeper into what the Power Platform is because it's not just one thing. Power Platform is a low code development automation and data platform available in Office 365. Some good use cases for this, you may have applications today you're managing. You may wanna put them, take them from an info path form or out in SharePoint or built somewhere else and bring them into Office 365. You can do that with the Microsoft Power Platform. We're also gonna talk about the relevance to your project management tools. And the Power Platform is really made up of a couple of different components. The first of them on the top left is Power Automate. Power Automate is a process automation tool that's really designed to help you build and deploy workflows and also connect data between different systems. So think of it really as a business process engine available in Office 365, where you can in a low code or business process friendly way, design workflows and connections into other data sources. Power Apps, which is the purple one here, is the application development platform and user interface layer where you can build the actual apps you're gonna be deploying out to your business and some of your customers internally. So that is the application layer. Power BI, which most, most folks are intimately familiar with, with using it for many, many years, that is the data, a reporting and analytics layer and tool for visualizing, trending, and dashboarding information across not only data in the Microsoft Cloud, but data anywhere. You may have it in your CRM system or your HR system or your customer management system, along with data that's in Office 365, you can use Power BI to aggregate that data and trend and report it. And on the right, we have what's called Power Virtual Agents. These are the intelligent bots. This is something that's been part of the Microsoft Cloud for a while, and it's actually going through a transition now into Microsoft Copilot, which is something we're gonna be talking about. How does, what is Copilot and how does it apply to artificial intelligence types of scenarios within and outside of the Power Platform? Copilot's a really, really big bet by Microsoft, so we're gonna spend some time on that today. Finally, below the line, there is the back end of this entire platform. In the middle is really one of the more important parts here. It's called the Dataverse. And if you haven't heard of the Dataverse, the Dataverse is the cloud-based database behind any of the model-driven apps you may build in Power Apps that's going to house all your data. Think of it as the database in Office 365. On the right, you have your AI or your co-pilot builder. We're going to be designing and building different AI components that are going to touch components in Office 365, potentially outside of Office 365 and deliver artificial intelligence capabilities. And then there are what are called AI connectors, which are gonna allow you to plug into other systems, other data sources, other content that's out there. So your AI engine, your co-pilot engine knows what to reference and what to source. So you know, how are people using these platforms today? Here are some examples. We have a state government agency we're working with that's using a power app today in purple to capture new project ideas from any employee across the agency and alert, they use Power Automate to alert managers that this is in a queue. And then they have an approval process that's built in Power Automate that takes those ideas and upgrades them into actual investments and in projects and business cases. And then they use Power BI to provide dashboards so people can see where their ideas are, the state of their ideas and their development. So think of it as a way you can actually capture lots of good information or ideas. Another example is a global hotel chain that we work with that today gets feeds of status of the rollout of new technologies into their different brands. They've got thousands of hotels and each of those hotels is going through IT upgrades on a constant basis, whether it's the TV in the room, the remote for the TV, the phone system, the internet connection, they're all being updated in different timeframes. So what this hotel chain wanted to do is they had that data coming in from different different sources and different formats about the status of that. And their executives wanted a way to visualize that on one visual set of reports and dashboards. Power Platform is used to pick up the data from those different data sources nightly, drop it into the Dataverse database, 
And then from there, they have a set of reports that are visual as well as they have visual maps so they can see the status and the, of those upgrades across a global network of different hotels. So that's another good example of how it's used. And finally, a good example in more of a PMO or a project management context is a large global PMO we've worked with that has a power app that pulls data from four different project management tools they use. They use Excel, they use Project for the Web, they use Project Online, they actually use another third party tool. They pull all that data together, let people work how they wanna work. They pull it together, they put the data in Dataverse, they display it all through a power app or a set of power apps. And then they have dashboards on top of that so they can measure progress consistently across projects being managed across the business. So what we're gonna show you today is how you can use these technologies in a better in a work and project management context. So if you do have requirements in other process centric areas, we can certainly help. But today our focus is really on project management. If you have requirements in those other areas, feel free to bring them up and we can definitely discuss them on a later webinar. So we've talked about Planner and we've talked about Copilot, we've talked about Power Platform. What about our good old friend Microsoft Project? So, you know, Project is still out there, it's still available, it's not going away. And there are several flavors of Project that are available today. The first of those is Project for the Web, which you've probably heard a lot about over the last five or six years since we went live from Microsoft. It is the lighter web-based project management service in Microsoft Office 365. It's really out there and it's designed for kind of your casual or business project managers, people that don't have a lot of project management experience, but you still want them managing projects in Office 365. It's available through the web user interface today in Office 365. It's currently being replaced with the new Planner Premium functionality. So Microsoft is basically taking this and upgrading it into the new Planner, and you'll see this happen in your tenants over the next couple of months. It is available today from a licensing perspective as what's called a Planner Plan 1, which is that basic or that premium version, or you can use what's called a Project Plan 3, which is your traditional project license to do more advanced scheduling scenarios you might have, that's, you can use one of the other licenses depending on the functionality you're looking for there. So Project for the Web is the first technology. All the data, importantly, in the Project for the Web system, because this is a service in Office 365, there's no hardware or software, software is a service. Project for the Web's data is stored in that Dataverse database in Office 365, which means we can then tap into it with a Power App and start to build applications around it. So Project for the Web, or the new planner with the premium functionality, is a version of project that's still out there. Today, this is available in most Microsoft Office 365 clouds. It's available in the commercial cloud. Um, it's available in the GCC, the government community cloud. It's also available in the EDU cloud, which is for higher education in K through 12 organizations. The second flavor of project, which is what we know from years and years ago and still out there today, Project Professional. This is your desktop professional scheduling tool for your experienced project managers or people that are doing more formalized, medium, large size project schedules. I wanna do standalone scheduling without a service behind it. It is today available using a project plan three license, which is a subscription license, or there is still a traditional version, an on-premise version of this called Project 2021 or the newest one, Project 2024. You can purchase those licenses. You can buy the subscription Project Plan 3 and it gives you access to the same technology. The difference is it's being updated from the cloud on the back end. So you still have a desktop client that's available to you and Microsoft is gonna continue supporting these type of desktop only scenarios. So if you're, you still love Microsoft Project, you like working in a standalone way, you're not interested in a service, you'll still have access to Microsoft Project Professional. It's not going away. The third flavor or version of project that's available is Microsoft's Project Online, or sometimes technically called Project Web App. This is the traditional enterprise project portfolio management service based on a SharePoint Online foundation that's available in Microsoft Office 365 today. It is available through using either the project or planner in Plan 1 for your team members, Plan 3 for your project managers, 5 for your portfolio resource managers in the PMO. So there's different licenses for different scenarios in this solution. It stores all its data in Office 365 in a database behind the scenes, and it also tightly integrates with SharePoint. So there's SharePoint content and project management content together. And yes, it is still supported. We've had a lot of questions about is Project Online going away? Is it not going to be supported? The answer is no. Microsoft is continuing to make, it, make a commitment to supporting this platform, simply because there's so many people that are reliant on it, and they have more of these advanced project portfolio management needs. So the good news is you have lots of options around Microsoft Project depending on your organization, what people need. And a lot of times we have organizations that use all of these, that you've got kind of business folks using Project for the Web or the new planner. We've got desktop project managers, standalone project managers using Project Professional. 
And then we've got enterprise PMOs or portfolio management offices or new product development organizations using Project Online and Project Web App. You have the option, they're all available in Office 365. The other nice thing is you see the similar subscriptions. These licenses cross over. So I could use a plan, a plan one license as a project manager in Project for the Web, but I can also play the role of a team member in Project Online with one license. Or as a project manager with that plan three license, I really have the option of using the tool that's best fit for me. I wanna keep using Project Desktop, I can do that. If I wanna use Project for the Web to collaborate on some lighter projects, if I wanna use Project Online. So you see there's a lot of crossover. You don't have to buy multiple licenses in these scenarios, which makes it very cost effective. But let's get into one of the newest additions to Office 365 is Copilot. If you're not aware, last year, Microsoft made available its AI or artificial intelligence companion, Copilot, in 365. And this can really help your organization take manual activities you have today and automate them seamlessly. Now, Carl, a colleague of ours at Microsoft refers to Copilot as a very well-intentioned intern. And that's, you know, while they're not getting everything perfectly the first time, it's some, something that has the ability to do things like create a PowerPoint presentation from a document or a set of data respond intelligently to emails that are sent repetitively or questions, or even take large sets of data and information and help you make sense of it. Think of it as really an artificial intelligence aid for you as a business person, a project manager, a business analyst, a team member, a director that can make your life easier. We're all very, very busy professionals with less time and we're asked to do more and more work. Copilot as a service can help you make the best of all your time which you can spend doing high value activities that have true business impact versus spending hours and hours creating content that takes away from the value, the valuable time at work. Importantly, Copilot is built on Microsoft's enterprise security and trust platform, you'll see here. And that's really important to ensure your data never leaves your Office 365 tenant, which means trustworthy, responsible artificial intelligence or AI. Best of all, like ever, that well-intentioned intern we talk about, Copilot has the ability to learn over time versus something called a large language model, which builds over time to become much more productive for you. And this is really the benefit of an AI engine. It's not just a chatbot. It's an engine on the back end that's going to learn. It's going to be more responsive. It's going to over time suggest things to you as it learns how you work and how people in the organization work. We'll have future sessions specifically focused on Copilot functionality. You can also get more information by following the link that's on this page. But let's get right into some examples of solution approaches that are bringing these things together. So, you know, one solution approach here is deploying basic project management solutions. These would be things that would maybe incorporate one of these pieces. Maybe it's new planner or maybe it's project desktop. So, you know, maybe I want to build and track a basic task list or work plan for all my projects. Or maybe I want to extend this out into more extended work management solutions or project management solutions. Maybe I have scenarios where I want to look across different projects, not just manage one or two, but maybe I've got six, seven, eight projects. You know, how can Microsoft's technology help me report on status and keep my management team up to date easily? Plus, do I have the ability to do some automation that may save me some time? How can we leverage these technologies to do this? So we can do things like reporting with AI and Copilot and also using Power BI for some of this stuff. And thirdly, you know, what we can do is we can build more advanced enterprise project management scenarios using the Power Platform on top of all this stuff. So now we can have solutions that maybe help us with project intake and approvals or portfolio tracking and reporting. Or maybe we need to do better issue and risk management and change controls or report off all this information. Or maybe we need to capture project financials and we want to track plan versus actual and see what our forecasts are and what's remaining. Perhaps we want to deploy performance dashboards that give us better visibility and insight and control over what's going on across portfolios of projects and initiatives. And finally, maybe we want to start doing some basic resource planning to really understand what our people are working on. These would be more advanced enterprise project and work management solutions that the platform can support. So what we're going to be doing next is actually jumping into a demonstration to show you how this platform at a basic at more extended and an advanced level can support a lot of the different requirements that we're finding from different clients. So let's hop right into our demo now. This is all gonna come through Office 365. These are all subscription services that are available that we walked through before. So kind of hitting on the basic scenarios first, we're in Office 365. Let's talk first about Planner. Now Planner is still out here. We come in here, we see the green P. It takes us to our Planner landing page. And this is where we have access to all of our Planner plans. And this is where we can see different information, different plans we have, a marketing team, an engineering project. You know, I'm just going to come here and do a planner plan. 
and we have our Kanban board here for our marketing launch project. We see we have in-progress tasks, next up tasks, completed tasks. We can see all these tasks in a grid. We can chart these out and see we have different visual buckets. We can get a kind of timeline or a schedule view of this. And this is all standard planner functionality. It's been available for quite some time. So we have basic planner. And then we also have, if we come out here and we go to the project tab, this is going to take us to our project homepage because Microsoft now has multiple project management tools. They needed an easy way to access them all in one place. So you can see if we come to this page, we see lots of information about different projects I'm responsible for or I'm managing. You can see I've got projects that are in what's called project, which is project for the web. I've got PWA projects, which are in project online. I can actually build visual roadmaps, which aggregate this data together to visualize it all in one place. But let's say I have this update website contents project that's up here. And I really want to get in there and manage that as a project. So this is project for the web, the web-based light project management tool. And you can see I have different views of my project here. I have a grid view where I have things like start dates and finish dates. I have tasks that have dependencies. I've got a percent complete and a priority. I have a Kanban board view where I can very easily visualize things like what's an initiation, what's in planning, what's an execution. You know, more modern project management functionality that folks maybe with a business background might find very useful and helpful. I have a timeline view, and this is going to be our Gantt chart view, which shows the flow of our project in a visual way. And we have the ability to drag and drop tasks and activities and make changes. I have visual charts, which growing on what was in Planner, now in Project for the Web, you can see we have remaining tasks. We can see what bucket tasks are in. We can even see how much work is out there for each of my people, whether it's Sunny or Todd or Sarah. And this is all available. And we also have goals where we can set organizational goals. And then we can track different activities in our project, our plan, back to those goals. And then we have a people tab here as well. And this is where we can actually have a Kanban board around the different resources. So we can drag and drop activities over to people to assign them and then check on the status. How many incomplete tasks does Sunny have versus late tasks? So this is the foundational concept of project for the web and planner working together. But where things start to change with some of the, the updates are in Microsoft Teams. So I'm actually going to go into Microsoft Teams now. It's not going to look a lot different than what we had before. We have our chat. We have our different teams here. We have our calendar. We have our phone calls. We have our OneDrive. Where things are going to change is when we go into the Planner app. And you see the Planner app now has a blue and purple set of checks by it. So now when we click on the Planner app, this is the new Planner app. And this is going to aggregate basic plans we have and more advanced premium plans that we had as well. So if you remember before, we had our project over here, our marketing launch that was over here. I can come up to our marketing launch or I can search for it here. I've got a Teams, I've got a celebration, I've got a marketing campaign. And then when I just click on that, then I have access to that all here through Microsoft Teams. So we have our basic planner plans, then we have our more premium ones. So this is the update website contents plan that was over there. Now you'll see it's embedded in the Planner app. This is the same project with the Kanban board, the timeline, the people. It's all here and it's fully interactive. So people can drag and drop, click on a task, update it all here. Microsoft has taken that project with the web functionality and turned it into new Planner with a premium functionality here. We can even search for things across this as well. So we have the ability to do this. But one of the really key reasons for this, to put all of the plans in one place, later or more premium, is the ability to come in here and look at something called My Tasks. This is functionality Microsoft recently released, and it's called Assign to Me. So as somebody who's either working on a project or assigned to projects, what it's going to do, it's going to aggregate all of my tasks across all of my plans, basic planner plans and premium ones all in one place. And for someone that's working on lots of different work, this can really save you a lot of time. For instance, I see I have a task here, determine a marketing campaign. I click on it. You can see this task was created in a premium plan. So then what I can do is I can click on that. I can status it here, or I can click on this. It takes me over into the detailed premium plan, and I can update my status from there. I also have any kind of standard planner plans here. Campaign plan I have, and I click on that, and it'll tell me if it's premium or standard. Assigned to me is really, really important. It actually brings together all of your work in one place. And this was one of the key vision points Microsoft had as they started to integrate this in 
And one of the key reasons to use Microsoft Teams as a user interface versus the web interface, because we have this My Tasks capability, My Plans capability, again, so I could go in. And again, if I want to look at one of the plans I have, maybe my marketing campaign plan, I can click on that. And it keeps all of my plans in one place. So Microsoft is using Teams to really centralize it, but help you organize your tasks all in one place. So this is really one of the nice features by integrating with Teams, you now have integrated task management and a lot of folks are really looking for that as a value point. So think of this as kind of your level one, your basic level solutions, light it up and it just works. What if we wanted to extend this out? We wanted to ask some questions. So now this is where we can start enabling Power BI and Copilot. So maybe now we wanna report off all the plans we have here. What I can do is I can go into Power BI. I'm gonna go into Power BI. And I have a whole set of reports and dashboards here based on my role in the organization. I'm gonna click on my planner premium or my project for the web reports. And now I've got a set of pre-built reports that are gonna pull data across all of my projects. In this case, you can see I have all the milestones going on across the marketing campaign, the other campaign, anything we have. And then we can focus just on one project or another here simply by clicking on the chart on the right. Or maybe I want to do a basic portfolio dashboard. So it's gonna show me the 144 projects that are being managed by my team, maybe my marketing team, and I can see them all in one place. Now I can focus maybe on just a couple of them. Maybe I wanna see all the projects being done by Todd right now. I click on that, and now I can see the three projects being done by Todd. Additionally, if I want to see projects that are in a certain state or maybe by a certain project manager, or maybe that have a certain bucket, I can click on that here as well. Or maybe I want a visual timeline view of all these projects. You know, it's really great that I've got them all in one tool, but show me a timeline. And by the way, show me progress on each of those different projects. So now I can get a portfolio view of all the projects I have going on. And then I can start to drill in and start to ask questions from here. Finally, there's other reports here for things like tasks. So maybe as a team member, I can go to assign to me, but maybe I wanna see for myself, show me all of the tasks I have on the marketing campaign planning project. And now I can see my three tasks, the project they're on, a link directly into the task, things like finish dates, progress, so I can always be kept up to date on all of my work across all of my projects in a single set of reports. Or even I can look at my timeline and I can visualize again, my tasks on my projects all in one place. I don't have to go and look at four or five or six different plans. They're all aggregated together in Power BI. So it's some really nice functionality that's built in with Power BI connecting into this. This is kind of the extended solution on top of what's out of the box. Okay. But let's say I wanted to get in and do a little bit of Copilot. I want the tool to do some things for me. So I'm gonna go back to my update website contents project. My plans here. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the AI engine. You see there's a button here that says Copilot. And this is where Microsoft is giving us the ability to ask for certain information. It's going to start suggesting things such as create, hey, add a task for me to a certain stage of the project, or give me a status report for this plan that includes these things, or maybe add a subtask to something, or get an answer to a question. So let's put some data into Copilot and see what it says. So let's say uh, we want to come up here and give me a status report for this plan. I'm gonna click on that. And now Copilot is gonna to get to work. It's gonna actually start to pull up status on this particular plan that I have up right now. And it's gonna provide me with an overview of that in a way that I can then communicate it to management in normal English. But most of the time, if you had to run a status report, you'd kick it out to Excel. You would start to play with the data, maybe put it in PowerPoint. We're gonna let Copilot do some of the work for us here. And in a couple of seconds, this very well-intentioned intern that we have has suddenly pulled up a summary. And let's see what Copilot is telling us. Copilot is saying the plan is managed by this person. It started on this date. It ended on this. It's ending on this date. It's currently 70% done with this amount of effort. How much is remaining? It's organized into different phases. It's actually understanding the logic of my project. It's telling me for each phase how far along we are and what's been done. And then it's asking me if I want other information about the project. Pretty helpful information. And I could have done that probably in 20 or 30 minutes and pulled on it together, but Copilot is now creating this for me. Or I can say, I'm really concerned about late tasks. Put all late tasks in this plan into a table. So now I want it in a table format so I can actually put it in the email and communicate it to a manager. So 
Copilot is now looking at that data. It's going to get it ready. Oh, uh, sh show me all my all eight tasks. Let's see what it does. And sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. Again, this is new technology that's been available since March or April, and now it's being applied into the new planner and the project platform. So show me all eight tasks, and it's looking over the plan. So instead of me having to go through 250 tasks I have on this project and export some data, now I can actually ask, ask Copilot to do this. And we found all different kinds of results. As Copilot starts to learn, it will start to get better at doing these things. So again, that well-intentioned assistant now has pulled this with a task name, who it's assigned to. Let's go up a little bit. The start, finish date, and the progress of all the tasks that I have in this project that are late. This probably just saved me about 30 minutes of work. Now I can take it and communicate it to management. And imagine, from a contextual perspective, if you could tell Copilot, hey, Copilot, take the status and take the list of tasks that are late and to be finished and take all the resource assignments, put those into a PowerPoint for me and pr present that, that's something that Copilot's gonna be able to do. It can already create PowerPoints based on content and data, and that's really where this is headed. Or you can even say, show me all the tasks related to a person on the project. And so really using that AI assistant to really help save you time so you can really spend more time analyzing the data versus pulling it together. And that really kind of takes us through the extended scenario of using these technologies kind of as they're built out of the box, solutions extended out using Copilot and Power BI. Okay? But let's get into enterprise level solutions now. And this is where we get into that purple, the Power App that we were talking about before. I'm gonna go into Office 365. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna click on the Power App I have for project. Now, how I know I'm there, I have a purple bar at the top. It says project. And now I can see these are all the projects that are now in my system that I'm tracking. This is the power. Uh, this is the Power App for Project, and we've actually layered in there a technology that we have for Agility developed called uh, Power Pro, which has a pre-built configuration, a pre-built set of dashboards and reports. It kind of helps get over some of the challenges that are there with the out of the box and kind of the naked version of it, so you can get started much quicker. And we can see here on the user interface perspective on the left on this Power App, it's called a model-driven Power App. We have projects. We also have programs. So if we wanted to capture and report on programs where we have projects that are part of them, we can actually have a hierarchy. And we can now capture program-level data about the cloud migration and then have the projects within it and understand the status and health of all those projects independent or directly related to the program. We have the ability to capture what are called project requests. So if I want people to come in and put in a request for a potential project, they can actually come into a form. Again, the form is the Power App, capture data in fields in this form, and then route that through a business process approval using Power Automate or a business process flow here. So you can use the workflow engine in Power Automate to have workflows and approvals behind whatever you're capturing, whether it's a request or a project. We can capture things like risks and issues. We can also capture changes. But if we go into a project, you know, before we just had the schedule, right? Now, if we go into a specific project we have, we have a lot more information. At the top, we may have a business process flow around our project management life cycle. So in a PMO level, maybe we want to standardize three or four different processes we use for different sizes or flavors of project. We can do that in the Power App. We can have stages such as committing resources, finalizing a schedule, coming up with a start and finish date, creating a Microsoft team so people can share the information. We have a summary at the top of her, how this project is progressing. We have all the data or metadata about those projects, things like the description, the department, strategic alignment, business impact, but also dates that are maybe coming from the underlying project schedule within this project. And now we can even set up things like baselines. Where we can put a baseline start, we see the estimated start, and down here, we're actually calculating a variance. Good or bad, are we ahead or are we behind of schedule from a start, finish, and effort, as well as a dollar's perspective? We can kind of build a framework around the kind of information we want to capture at an enterprise level. You'll also see there are tabs of information. There is a business case tab. So maybe early on in the project lifecycle, when we're in initiation, we need to capture and approve the business case. That can all be captured here within the Power App. Problem, solution, benefits, even we can relate project requests to these business cases and projects. The tasks are all going to come from the underlying new planner plan, and you'll see that'll be here. And now we have the grid, the board, the timeline, so the schedule is tied directly into the project. We also have the ability to 
capture and track risks, issues, and changes, and capture any information about them we want. So maybe when a change comes against a project, we have a change form that comes up within the app with a description, the benefits, the type of change, scope, schedule, cost, technical, or other, request a decision date, maybe we have a decision assignee, a decision status, and up here we can capture information such as what was the date raised, what's the impact on the project, What's the risk around the change, priority, and change plan? And again, this is a foundation called Power Pro that we're layering in there that we found that you know, 80 or 90% of our clients tend to use and it can be built around. And finally, we also have status. And one of the nice things about the Power Platform is we can not only capture a status snapshot, we can actually have a summary of it here. We have two active risks, two active issues, two pending changes. And down here, we have snapshots at a point in time of how the project was progressing. We can say, how are we doing in mid-April versus late April versus the end of April, or early May? Our project manager can actually enter all their context in here and have indicators that calculate or represent the status. The project is making significant strides, our current spend to date, what we've accomplished, what's upcoming, and what are some of the key decisions. So we can think about if we're trying to deploy an enterprise application around this within this platform, the Project Power App allows you to do that. And finally, at the bottom, reporting. Everybody wants reporting. What if we wanted to really get to an enterprise level around reporting? What we can do is we can embed some of these pre-built reports. These are just some examples, again, that come with the Power Pro solution we mentioned at an enterprise level or a group level. So now we have a portfolio dashboard. And it not only shows us the projects, it shows by budget, it shows departments, it shows all the information about your portfolio. So if you wanted to say, hey, show me all the in-progress projects, that are being done for a certain department. You could click on those, and now we're down to two projects that are being done by our department number two. The other nice thing is we can click on this and generate an on-demand status report for that project, simply like clicking the project. And now we have a live status report with a snapshot of exactly where we are right now, and all the content that was captured and created during the latest status is all here in our status report. Changes, issues, risks, activities, accomplishments. You can see you can have very automated status reporting here. It can save you a lot of time simply by having people update the system. And so there are reports here on the portfolio lifecycle. So maybe if you want to visually see everything that's in initiation versus approval versus execution, you can kind of walk through your entire life cycle. Or if you wanted to see something like you know, show me a timeline view. We have managers that want to see everything related to our ERP program versus our transformation program, our cloud migration. Yeah, we can very quickly and easily see everything that's actually out there in the planning phase right now, planning and approval. And now we can see what programs they relate to. Finally, things like day-to-day -day tracking of things like milestones. You know, now I see I've got 85 total milestones across my portfolio. Show me just the ones that are overdue and show me just the ones that are overdue on the digital identity project. It allows you to go from that macro level down to the micro level very quickly and not have to do manual reporting. So an enterprise level solution based on the same platform we're talking about, the Project Power App is all available here. But what if I wanted to leverage Copilot on this? Well, you'll see there's a button, Copilot button. Copilot is actually integrated in with the Power Platform too. And we're starting to see some of the emergence of some really good first use cases. For maybe we wanna say how many active, how many programs do we have today? I'm gonna ask Copilot this. I may have spelled something wrong, I may not like that. But then it's gonna look at all the data in our tables that are again stored in our Dataverse database. And it's gonna come back with a suggestion. Oh, let's see how many, how many programs do we have? Maybe I just misspelled it. And it may tell us how many programs we have. We have a total of four programs. Good to know. You know how many active projects are there? And these are some basic scenarios, but these are gonna to start to grow over time as we all learn. And we can say we have six active projects today. And then we can maybe ask a question, how many risks are there? That's spell right. Here on the health assessment reporting tool project. So instead of having to drill into lots of different data sets, we can start to ask questions and co-pilot will tell us there are two risks on this. And so this is gonna learn and grow over time to the point as to where maybe we have Copilot generating 
Power BI dashboards and reports for us because Copilot's integrated with Power BI as well. Or maybe we ask Copilot to go and create five new project or create a project based off these three new requests. Copilot can go do that. So really, what it can do is absolutely limitless. And the direction this is headed, a lot of possibilities. So as we start looking at kind of a basic level solution you can get started with, with the new planner, with these solutions, uh, solution extended out to include Power BI, as well as Copilot, and then some enterprise level solutions. And really what we tried to show you is you really have a hierarchy here with these solutions. You can start with building and tracking basic task lists and work plans. You can move to looking across projects to report on status and have scheduling automate information and bring up status. And you report with Power BI and some of the automation. And finally, hey, help me track, manage, and report on my projects and portfolios and resources. Help me capture ideas and project requests and route for approval. Help me capture project issues and risks and changes, capture status snapshots and report on them. And finally, importantly, from a business perspective, really help me establish and clearly understand the portfolio and all the performance metrics within that. You have the capabilities to do all this in the platform. And really where Copilot and the new planner are going is Microsoft is building out some initial scenarios. So you saw when I first ran Copilot in that basic or that, that extended scenario, you have the ability right now to go in and ask questions. But over time, you'll be able to create and update plans based off of templates or previous projects. You can, over time, have it generate status emails, send a notification to everybody that has a late task. Wouldn't that save you time? And also have it help you find context. This is all built on Microsoft's comprehensive strategy and approach for artificial intelligence and co-pilot. It's built around security, it's built around compliance, privacy, and most importantly, responsible AI. The organization does have to make a commitment to co-pilot and have that in your environment, then you can start to apply it to the new planner and its scenarios. So really think of this as a way you can start thinking about the next wave of how you're gonna plan and manage your projects and the different components, how you can leverage them in a project or portfolio management scenario. So, you know, a lot of people come to us and say, how do I get started with this? The technology looks really great, but it seems a little overwhelming. The so most people we talk to kind of start with the wrong thing. They start with the licensing. I'm going to go buy some licenses and see what I can do. Well, you should actually back up and really start by doing some of the key planning that they would do with any new application they may put in place. The first one in the top middle is really understanding your organizational goals and maturity. Find out where, I'm, where am I today? What can you realistically achieve with a new solution? Where are my people today? And what does a solid vision look like that's aspirational, but also achievable? Something we can really get to and deploy where people will use the tools. You also wanna focus by really understanding your user base and the roles you'll be supporting. There's a drastic difference between trying to address a large IT PMO with hundreds of projects and doing resource management versus a small marketing team looking to manage smaller communications related projects. Each group is gonna have a different set of needs, a different set of goals, and maybe even a different vision. And by trying to really understand those and place them in the right place with the right solution technology, it really works best. There's really one size fits all. And this is really why Microsoft provides you with the options, the platform to do this from a light to a medium to really a very robust solution set. Then you wanna start by identifying which of the solutions in the Microsoft suite are the right fit. It may be one, it may be multiple components of these solutions. That's really the benefit of having a Microsoft platform solution. You have that flexibility, you have the space to smart, start small and grow or start as big as you want. After you've identified the solution, you wanna really think about working with trusted partners with experience in these platforms to design and build out a production pilot that can be used to not only showcase what's possible, but also, it will be designed to help that group or team become much more efficient with their current process. You really achieve two ends with that. You get people working in a better way, more efficiently, and you can start showcasing this for the rest of your organization. And from a support perspective, we've really found one or two different approaches tends to work best right now. A lot of organizations we work with, if you look at the bottom left circle or square, they create what we call a center of excellence around their project management tools. And it's really a community of practice for you and your PMO or PM community and you're using these tools effectively and following a consistent set of processes, it's all about listening and learning and adapting, especially today with all the changes going on, not only with technology, but in our economy and the business environment, change is constant. Having a mechanism to listen and learn and prepare and adapt your project management solutions, because there's a pretty good chance you'll be using multiple components here, becomes a really critical step to success. So you kind of want to start with the end in mind, how you're going to support these applications, not just think, I'm going to buy some licenses and figure it out.
And often we've seen some organizations take on more of a PM as a service approach, which is listed here as well. And what this is, is you've got a core set of offerings or solutions. You offer them to different parts of the business. And maybe you're an IT or the PMO, and you know these requests are going to come in. Instead of having them go out and swipe a credit card and buy an external product, you say, okay, I'm going to give you one of three or four options here. And then we're going to, with joint funding, you fund some of it, we'll fund some of it. We're going to build out a solution that's built specifically for you. Very rarely does something just out of the box meet everybody's needs. This has become a really popular approach over the last four years with IT organizations that are centralized and helps them understand the different needs for different groups, but provide a platform of options that then gets catered to the different needs of the groups. Finally, we do recommend establishing a relationship with a partner that's in the space that can get to know you and your business and your culture and work with you over time through different iterations of these solutions. With so much changing so quickly, it's almost impossible to stay on top of everything in this space. And you really need to have folks to, to lean on in this area. This is our role of fragility, and this is what the role we play for most of our clients. So again, it's about listening, learning, adapting, and having a really good process around putting the right technologies and right solutions in place to meet the demands and needs of your different business stakeholders. So with that, we're gonna finish up our presentation here. I'm gonna hand the floor back to Annie and she's gonna go through and see if we have any questions in the queue. Annie? Great presentation, Rob. We'll now open the floor to questions and answers. Remember to enter your questions in the question, question answer manager at the top of your team screen. Let's see if there's any questions in the queue for Rob. I see from Dave, can the My Tasks read tasks assignments from Project Online, not just Planner? Good question, Dave. So today it only reads from New Planner and kind of the, the traditional version of Planner. It doesn't read from Project for the Web, uh, Project Online. So. Eric asked, can we provide data using Power BI from different Project for the Web environments in the same and or different environment tenants? Uh, good question, Eric. You absolutely can. So Pro Power BI can point to any data data source or application. If you had two or three Project for the Web instances and maybe a Project Online one, you could actually create a unified data model that points to each of their databases, those Dataverse databases and the SQL database behind Project Online, and create integrated dashboards and reports with that. Um, and that's a really good strategy if you're thinking about rolling out different um, named instances of Project for the Web for different groups, aggregated through reporting. So absolutely. Kelly wanted to know, which application were you talking about when you covered status reports and managing requests? Got it. So that was the Project Power App, uh, the purple, which is the Power App that kind of aggregates all the information and allows you to put in different requests and capture status. And then all that data sits in the database, the Dataverse, for reporting with Power BI. Those are all the questions in the queue. Are there any last minute remaining questions before we move on? So how can Fragility help you? If you're looking for assistance with project or PPM, think of us. We can help you with consulting, training, and adoption services to address your most pressing challenges with Microsoft solutions. Additionally, if you're looking to up your game with either Project for the Web or Project Online, we offer a series of pre-built solutions and accelerators that can make any implementation that much better. Reach out to us to explore any of these solutions or services to see how they could add value to your organization. If you are headed down the road with either piloting or implementing new planner with the project power app, Fragility has a built unique solution called Power Pro specifically designed to help you accelerate your rollout. Remove some of the limitations within the core platform, improve usability and drive better adoption. It's also designed to include a set of reports we found most enterprises can use to measure performance and progress, including portfolio project status and resource reports. Best of all, it's available as a part of our core deployment services at a one-time cost, so you aren't tied down to any recurring subscription fees many other partners require. And it leverages the base level project and planner want plan license, so you can keep your costs down while delivering a great solution. For more information, reach out and we'll provide additional details. We've also included a link to the solution on our website, so you can find the solution on Microsoft App Source as well.
In closing, listed here are some good resources for your new team if you'd like to learn more about these solutions. You can visit our YouTube page, which has a set of playlists ranging from client testimonials and best practice videos to a full library of focus recordings on topics like resource management, portfolio management, and project execution. Next, you can head over to our shiny new website at Perjilly.com. It offers lots of great content, including a learn section with blogs and videos for the PMO and PPM community. We'd also recommend you visit the Project and Planner Group on LinkedIn, which now has over 27,000 active members of a great interactive learning community. This is a public domain resource that everyone in the community has access to. Finally, if you have specific questions or needs, reach out to us. You can send an email to info and we'll set up time to talk through your needs, challenges, goals, and work together to develop solid solutions to meet your requirements. Thank you again for joining our webinar today. We appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you online for our next session. Have a great day.